Let's talk about Grime. Grime is a Metroidvania and side-scroller Souls-like that was originally released in 2021 by Cloverbyte. However, the developers continued working on it for years after release. They got it onto more platforms, and they added not one, but three entirely free content updates. Earlier this year, they finalized the game in the Definitive Edition. Now in Grime, you play as a living black hole with a body made of rock. And the world and enemies around you are pretty unique looking. Composed of rocks, sand, teeth, hands, faces, eyes, nerves. It's as if you tripped and fell into a Tool music video and had to fight your way out. The developers also give their respects to some of their inspirations in the game itself, with references to Hollow Knight, Salt and Sanctuary, Ring of Pain, Dead Cells, Sekiro, and of course, Dark Souls. Now for my review, I give Grime a solid two thumbs up. It is fun, it is unique, and while some of the mechanics feel borrowed from other games in the genre, Grime stands on its own. It has its own special character traits, versatile weapons, its own tone, its own story, and it's just, it's a good game. I originally bounced off this game, however, but as they started adding free content, I came back and finished it eventually. I also wanted to experience the special New Game Plus mode that they had added in one of the DLCs. My playthrough focused on non-weapon damage, as much as the game allowed at least, focusing on the absorb or parry effect, and later the pull effect that allows you to stagger enemies as well as make various jumps in the game, both in and out of combat. Now the game is heavily designed around this parry and pull system of mechanics, and boss battles can often feel very rhythmic because of them. I felt that that was pretty cool. If that's your thing, then this game is for you. While the game is first and foremost a Metroidvania, it has many features and mechanics found in the games that it takes the inspirations from. You can play the game almost entirely with parries, or you could use fist weapons, or maybe a big hammer, and there's some more unusual and unique weapons in there too. Weapons gain damage from three of your five stats which are more or less equivalent to health, stamina, strength, dexterity, and intelligence. What really sets Grime apart for me is that you can absorb enemy abilities and then you can rank them up. When you kill enough of any given enemy with the absorb ability, you unlock a special trait. Throughout the world, there are lesser bosses as well, and when you kill them, you will get hunt points. Then you use these hunt points to level up the trait, with each level increasing in cost. You're never entirely locked into your build though. Both the attribute system and the hunt points can be undone through a separate resource, which while it is limited, I was able to use this undo button a couple times with plenty of leftovers if I needed to use it more. The free content updates, Colors of Rot, Tinge of Terror, and Parting Shade added multiple pieces to the final definitive edition. Within these, there are new regions, more bosses, more story, a parkour challenge, and a special New Game Plus mode. Now I'll talk more on the New Game Plus later. Now I played this game with very few, if any, issues on my PC with a controller. It supports keyboard and mouse, but I personally can't imagine playing this game without a controller. I also played it a good deal on my Steam Deck. It ran quite well. So next I'm going to be doing a quick breakdown of the major systems within the game. I really liked a lot of these systems, so I really want to talk about them. I'm going to start with the traits that you choose from. So I did a non-weapon focused run. You start with your absorb, which is your parry ability, and you can also return projectiles to enemies with this. The parry normally damages and consumes enemies with red health bars, but some enemies have multiple segments to their health and or gray health bars as well. There is a trait that you can get very early on that allows the non-absorb parries, called repels, to deal damage. This allows a parry build to deal damage to gray health bars 
and makes up for the fact that you can't normally. It is less damage though. There are also other options for trait-based damage, such as leaving an echo behind that will damage enemies if it is attacked, and another that allows the pull ability to deal some damage as well. Now the game is very focused on the absorb mechanic, or parrying. I didn't find it to be absurdly difficult most of the time. I actually found it relatively fair. But late into my New Game Plus run, I did finally upgrade the timing window with a specific trait. It can go as high as 50% extra timing window, and it makes the ability extremely easier at the cost of whatever you'd normally sink your hunt points into otherwise. There are also multiple stamina regen or stamina recovery traits. One is another echo that, that on dash gives stamina if attacked, and there's one that gives some stamina when you pull an enemy and another of stamina when you absorb an enemy. Stamina regen is kind of slow in this game, and the game seems to intend you to choose one of these to assist in managing stamina recovery. Next we have the armors. Armors give a bonus to stats, such as max HP or max stamina, increased strength, you get the picture. They can also give full set bonuses when you wear all three pieces amplifying enemy traits beyond their current level on your character when worn. There's no defensive damage types, nor are there equipment weights. So that's it for armors, more or less. Normally I would say I love damage types and the meta game of figuring out how to balance weight or stat requirements, but in this game I've really enjoyed seeing a new system that's both simpler and also has really strong choices in it. Now the game has a lot of different weapons, and I haven't tried all the weapons, but the ones I did try were all pretty well designed and quite fun. You have your typical fast and slow weapons, some swords, some hammers. There are fist weapons, a single whip, and then twin daggers called bow daggers that also have a ranged attack. There's also special magical lanterns that don't do direct damage, but actually stack debuffs on enemies and then pop in some fashion. Then there's the iconic glaives and reapers that are shown in various promotional material, and they look pretty cool too. Weapons upgrade with resources like other souls likes, and scale with your stats as well. Now the game has a couple different options for healing and staying alive. So some comments on that. You start with one breath meter, and you can unlock two more across the game. Each meter can be used with a button press, for a big health regeneration effect. You gain breath from parries on enemies and other sources. Now this regen is a slow effect and it can be used in combat or in a boss fight, but it's just not the fastest and, and can sometimes not be the safest option. There's a second unlockable called Fetal Pearls, which act as more true health potions. These are limited consumables, but they refresh on death or save and they also heal a good deal smaller amount than breath, but they do heal instantly. Now, Fetal Pearls are just one of many consumables you can get, and while they are permanent to your character, other consumables are, well, just that, temporary consumables. The names of many of these are extremely obscure, and the names of everything in this game are pretty obscure or abstract in various ways. But I will say, read the consumables. These can do all sorts of different buffs, such as bonus damage, stamina regeneration, damage reduction, and they can make a rough situation much easier. They all last a whole minute. And I really appreciate when stuff lasts a while and not, say, 10 seconds or so. While I enjoyed Grime, I wasn't exactly looking to replay it. It felt a bit longer, more tedious sometimes, and a lot of platforming and movement. And while all that was fun, it just didn't give me the motivation to replay the game. Last of all, let's get into New Game Plus. I did my run all the way through New Game Plus, maintaining the parry only, uh, especially on bosses. I'm not normally a huge fan of New Game Plus modes, but I wanted to try this one because it was advertised as a little bit more unique. And I actually really enjoyed it. 
In New Game Plus, like normal, you will reset the world, starting at the beginning. But unlike many New Game Plus modes, you don't lose your abilities. Your traits, your stats, your abilities, your weapons, your armors, all of it stay with you. So you do have to refind all the waypoints, and enemies will deal more damage, as you'd expect, and have a bit more health. But enemies have some unique changes to them. They might have some different attacks, such as a mild leap or stab that they didn't have before. Well, many other enemies might shoot extra projectiles or simply shoot projectiles that they didn't have. And you can gather all your hunt points again, which will help you fill out your build. And when you beat bosses and mini bosses, you no longer gain the abilities because you already have them. So instead, you gain the capacity to overlevel your weapons and your traits. Weapons can be overleveled forever. And many traits can be overleveled forever as well. But other traits have limits. Some can't be overleveled, and some can only be overleveled so many points. But also, New Game Plus introduces a special extra optional boss. It's a very unique boss fight. It's completely optional, but each time you beat it, you do get a specialized armor. And you can do this up to 10 cycles. You do have to do 10 New Game Pluses to get all the armors. But that is kind of the final ultimate goal, I, I think, is kind of the idea. Well, that's all I have about Grime. I know it's a lot. It's a great game. I do recommend it. If you like certain aspects of Metroidvanias, or Souls-likes, or a lot of platforming, or a lot of parrying, this game's for you. Go get it. Go play it. And if you like this kind of content, give a like and a subscribe. Or if you want, you can also donate on Patreon.